Hi, it's Lillian. We are back for a new video about the Tower of God lore, and this time it will be a rather short video, even if it will be as complete as possible, as always. Because yes, we are going to talk about a very influential organization, but of which we don't know much, the Wolhaig Song. Since we have to start at the beginning, I will first tell you how Wolhaig Song was born, according to the non-canon law, and for that, I will have to tell you more particularly the story of its creator, Beik Ryun, and of his meeting with Urek Mazino. Beik Ryun was an orphan born in the middle area, what I personally call the intermediate tower for simplicity. He took refuge in an uninhabited forest in order to avoid contact with others, and it is said that he became one with the forest. He lived there for a very long time. He learned to control the Shinsu on his own during this time and after a while, Hedon, interested in his abilities, chose him to become a regular. Baek Ryan quickly became a ranker, and then returned to his forest in isolation. He returned to his forest and cared for it for many years. The forest was said to be like a perfectly alive animal, with a very mysterious atmosphere. Then Urik Mazino entered the tower and during his ascent he heard about this mysterious forest. He went to meet Baek Ryun and the two of them became best friends. Baek Ryun was very interested in the outer world that Urik spoke of so often, and he ended up dreaming of living there. Urik resumed his ascent of the tower and all the while, the desire to see the outside world only grew in Beck Ryun. When Urek now a ranker, returned to his friend, he confessed his passion for the outside world. Urek, delighted to hear this, asked him to leave the tower with him, but Beck Ryun refused, for he could not leave his forest, which was like his own life to him. After that, Urek beat his chest and said, Then I will give wings to this forest, I will make it follow you wherever you go. Beck Ryun thought Urek was rambling because he was completely drunk, but Urek was very serious. He let out a scream like thunder, absorbing the entire forest. He compressed it to the size of a fist, put it in a box with wings, and gave it to Beik Ryun. Beik Ryun was very surprised and grateful, but there was a problem. The compressed forest was much too heavy for him, so he gave the box to Urek to take care of it. This winged box thus became the symbol of their unshakable friendship. The forest was later moved to the 77th floor, since Urek had passed Ariehon's test, and Ariehon had given him that floor as a reward. Rankers who heard about this story rushed there, including Yuri Jahad, and they reportedly planted the winged tree, which in addition to being a nice antithesis, is a metaphor for them founding the organization, Wolhaik Song literally meaning the winged tree under the moon, to echo the story of Baik Ryun and Urek. So the main goal of Wolhaik Song will be to find a way out of the tower. The hierarchy in the Wolhaik Song is symbolized by the winged tree badge. All members of the Wolhaik Song have one, so it symbolizes their membership in the Wolhaik Song in addition to simply indicating their rank. This badge is quite similar to the Wolhaik Song symbol, except that the number of wings varies according to the rank of the person in the organization. This badge exists in several forms, it can be a kind of pin, it can be sewn on clothes etc, and Uruk has it tattooed on his back. The number of wings varies between 1 and 14, the 14 wings badge being probably reserved for Beck Ryun and Urek. During the second floor administrator test, the last test of season 1, Yuri gave Shibisu a one winged badge and told him to give it to Bam when he sees him, in chapter 72 of season 1. But since he won't see him again, as Bam is officially dead at the end of the test, he won't give it to him until the end of the Battle of the Workshop arc. We don't know what are the criteria to go up in rank in the Wolhek Song, nor what the number of wings means in terms of power or influence but we have a little idea thanks to Urek, who when Karaka managed to take his attack in the death floor, told him that if he joined the Volhek Song, he would give him 6 wings. It is also known that members with more than 4 wings can recommend a ranker or a regular as a member, leaving the higher ranks of Volhek Song to accept or not. Although they are one of the most influential organizations in the tower, the known members of Wolhaik Song are very few. There is of course its leader, Beik Ryun, and his second, Urek Mazino. I have already talked to you in detail about these two in the videos about the top 100 and the most powerful beings of the tower so if you want details, go ahead, everything is there. With an 8-winged badge, there is Kun Hachuling, or Blueberry according to his codename. He is a ranker who has separated from the Kun family since he joined the Wolhaik Song. We see him several times since the beginning of the story, from the 25th chapter, since he was in the group of Wolhek Song, who accompanied Yuri to the second floor. He also had a small discussion with Aguero during the test of the administrator. We see him again in the season 2 during a mini arc of transition, when Leroro and Quant go in search of the Wolhek Song. After ruining Quant by winning all the games in his arcade, he will receive a call from Yuja, and will decide to send Leroro and Quant to do the job for him. 
a job that will consist in keeping an eye on the new Slayer candidate during the Battle of the Workshop, and that will eventually lead Lero Ro and Quant to help Baum escape. Hachuling is the famous hacker who will help Lero Ro and take control of the cameras. We know that Hachuling went to the hidden floor, he is extremely gifted in hacking, he occupies the position of Pathfinder, and as we could see, he loves video games. Then since we just mentioned it, there is Yuji, who seems to be a bit of an assistant to Urik and one of the masterminds of Wolhexong. We see him in the Ark of the Flower of Zygena, as well as in the Ark of the Floor of Death. There is an anecdote about him that SIU wrote on his blog. Apparently because of Yuja it is very difficult for Wolhag Song members to go to karaoke with him, because he only sings traditional folk songs from the floor where he was born, and he refuses to enter a karaoke if they don't have these songs available. Once, someone asked a Wolhag Song member, but does he even sing well? And this member would have had a terrible facial expression, which would break anyone's heart. Here it is. Then we can mention Kurudan, who we see in Season 1 with Yuri's group and who has a badge with six wings. He is very tall, well this is also because Evan is very short, and is a wave controller, and more particularly a Dansulsa, which means that he masters Dansul, a very powerful type of Shinsu technique, which he uses to beat Lopo Bia Ren in one move in Season 1. Then there are Tulalan and Majax, or Majax according to the translation. The first one is just a random rank D regular, and yes his name is a reference to the French soccer player Jeremy Tulalan. And the second one is the manager of the Wolhaik Song owned complex on the 30th floor. We will only see them on one square in the whole story of Tower of God so enjoy it. Boy. To resume with the members of the team that accompanied Yuri on the second floor, there is Miss Ice Strawberry. Her real name is unknown but there is a good chance that she is a member of the Eurasia family, and maybe of the Fonsecal branch too. She has the appearance of a little girl but is surely rather old because she calls Lore, young man, when Lore was 134 years old, and then she is a ranker, all rankers are old. This appearance is not surprising when we know that the members of the Eurasia family are known for their innate talent in the mastery of Shinsu, and when we know that this great mastery can stop the growth of the individual. This is surely what happened to her, same for Fonsekal Irur by the way. But anyway, all this to say that she probably had a great mastery of Shinsu since her childhood, and that she is also rather old. So chances are that she is quite strong. For the record, SIU named her that because strawberry is her favorite fruit. And there is also the partner of Miss Ice Strawberry whose name is unknown. We don't know anything about him but we can see that he has a badge with 8 wings on his clothes. And finally, there is Yon Woon, a ranker of the Yon family who travels around to help people. We will see him at the beginning of Season 3, because Shibisu will have to get the power of the flames of Woon in order to get Kun out of the coma. And I forgot, but Lero Ro and Quant also became members of Wolhaik Song, since they had to do the mission that Hachuling had given them. Mission that will be accomplished at the end of the Battle of the Workshop arc. Uh, finally, I must mention the case of Yuri. She is not part of the Wolhaik Song despite the fact that she was there the day the organization was created, and she cannot be part of it simply because she is a princess of Jihad, and has to remain loyal to the Empire in some way. She just hangs out with Wolhaik Song because they get along well, and because she is close to Urek. Oh, and SIU said in a Q&A that one of the regulars in Season 1 will later become an officer of the Wolhaik Song. He didn't say who, of course. And otherwise, except Tulalan, all the known characters of Wolhaik Song, which I have just mentioned, are at least rankers. The rumors that Wolhaik Song is an anti-government organization are false. The Wolhaik Song has no real enemies because their only goal is to find a way to get out of the tower. They are not interested in the politics of the tower, Urik himself told Baum how futile all this politics, revenge etc. was compared to the outer world, which is infinitely vast. This is why this group is considered more of a social club with many members, revolving around the idea of finding a way out of the tower. But these ideas are still opposed to the rather conservative ideas of Jihad's empire. Moreover, Urek's omnipotence and temperament will tend to create tensions, as for example when he got the baby Zygena back and upset the Yon family. Moreover, the Wolhaik Song is the only group, along with the workshop, that could be a serious threat to the Jihad Empire. For there are also many very powerful rankers in Wolhaik Song, in addition to Urek, who alone could exterminate one of the ten great families without any problem, as Gustang suggested on the floor of death. However, since Jahad could also single-handedly exterminate the Wolhaik Song in an instant, Urek is the only one who could pose a threat to him, so they both naturally neutralize each other. They know that a war between them would be a disaster on both sides, and they have no serious reason to fight. That is why, even if it causes some tension, the existence of Wolhaik Song is tolerated by Jahad's empire, and that is also why Urek will not try to kill Jahad, even if Garam asks him. The empire of Jahad and the Wolhaik Song are thus in a kind of forced peace, 
They are two groups with opposite ideologies who are neither enemies nor allies who do not necessarily like each other, but who have no choice but to live together. As for their relations with the Fug, they are not very good. However, there are some members who belong to both Fug and Wolhexong, and this openness is probably due to the ideological differences that exist within Fug itself, as I already explained in the previous video. That's it for this time. The video was rather short because we know very little about the Wolhexong. We will surely know more about them when Bam and the others will have reached the 77th floor, where their HQ is. And maybe we will learn a little more about the outside world, who knows, because only the Wolhexong seems to care about it at the moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I encourage you to like, comment, share, subscribe, etc. And we'll meet again for the next video which will be on the workshop.